Opening statements begin tomorrow in the murder trial of a man accused of pushing his wife off a cliff. Tony Henthorne fell to her death in September of 2012 during a scenic hike in Colorado's Rocky Mountain National Park. Her husband, Harold, told police it was an accident. But investigators say he couldn't explain why he had a park map with an X marking the spot where she fell. Now, federal prosecutors argue he murdered her to collect four and a half million dollars in life insurance money. Let's bring in our legal panel, Nicole DeBoard, former prosecutor, Jay Apt, criminal defense attorney. Nicole, at first uh, glance, this looks like a tragic accident until you realize that this man's first wife also died in a uh, very tragic accident. Somehow a car uh, rolled off a jack while he was changing a flat tire and she died in rural Colorado as well. Is this the point where prosecutors can put one plus one and now it equals two, which is murder? That's exactly right. In fact, what the prosecutors are basing this prosecution on is something called the doctrine of chances. And what that means is, is that one time when you have an accident, uh, it's a terrible tragedy. You have two and it becomes improbable. Uh, this is based on an old case where a, a, a guy had three wives that ultimately drowned in a bathtub. And since that time, the prosecution has been allowed to bring in evidence of additional crimes which are very similar to prove that the accident that they're using as a defense is actually very improbable. So that's what we have here. Uh, so Jay, how do, you, how do you bridge the gap here from the issue of, all right, it is improbable that this might have happened and perhaps you wouldn't want your sister to marry this guy. But on the other hand, you don't necessarily have beyond a reasonable doubt. That's an excellent point. So improbable is not the standard that we convict people in this country. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. And I've read the autopsy report and the medical examiner's report in this case, and it shows that the medical examiner could not conclude as to what the cause of death was. He could not establish this was a homicide. Um, there's no forensic uh, uh, evidence to suggest it was a murder. There are no uh, witnesses. And the only thing the prosecution has is sort of vague circumstantial evidence. There's an X on a map. His prior wife also died, and there's a lot of life insurance. And that's it. That's not enough. That's just circumstantial evidence. We don't convict people in this country of crimes unless we can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they've committed that murder. And I just don't think the prosecution has it here. I've tried lots of murder cases with a lot more evidence and still gotten acquittals. I don't think they'll be able to do it. Uh, Nicole, does Jay have a point here that, that there's, there, there may be a lot of smoke, but not necessarily any fire so far? Well, you know, the thing about it is, is if someone's going to commit a murder, they choose the location where they're going to do it, and it's not typically in front of a whole bunch of witnesses. So you can actually go forward on a case when there is no witness and use the circumstances or circumstantial evidence to prove your case. So while it may be a tough case for the prosecution, it's certainly a very risky situation for the defense, and this prosecution has decided to go forward based on this doctrine of chances. So, Jay, is there, is there a chance the prosecutors who obviously aren't uh, in favor Favor of losing cases. Federal prosecutors in particular aren't really uh, that fond of taking something to court they don't think they can get a conviction on. Is there something that they know perhaps that we don't about this case? Or is this guy just in so incredibly unsympathetic that they think that they'll get the jury to convict him simply on that? It's possible that they have something that they are expect to spring on impeachment. But, you know, the way the law works is under Brady versus Maryland, prosecutors have to turn over all the evidence prior to trial that is um, essentially exculpatory and most of the evidence that's incriminatory. So the defense lawyers probably have a pretty good picture of what the prosecutors have in their in their box in terms of tools to try and prosecute this guy. And I just don't see the conviction happening. There's just not enough of the pieces of the puzzle here where you're going to get to beyond a reasonable doubt. Remember, we're not dealing with evidence more likely than not. We're dealing with beyond a reasonable doubt, which is a very high standard for the state to try and meet its burden. They can bring the charges. I just don't see them winning the case. So, so to that end, Nicole, can, can the prosecutors bring in family members and those kinds of things to say, hey, does, does this make sense? What was their relationship like? Were they having marital problems or is that stuff all off the table? It's certainly possible that they can bring that kind of evidence in, and certainly they can bring in witnesses to talk about his reputation for being a truth teller or not a truth teller. And I'll tell you, they lost quite a few jurors in the juror selection process because those jurors had already made up their mind based on the highly inflammatory nature of the two accident scenario. So the defense may have a problem here.
and we will see if they do. Opening statements begin tomorrow, a case we are going to follow and look to your expertise to help us break down. Nicole DeBoer, Jay Apt, appreciate your guys' insights today. Thank you. Leland. Thank you, Leland. Thank you.